Amazon has just announced changes to their inventory performance index that will make it a little harder for you to get unlimited storage. What's going on everybody? It is Manny and I am back with another video. It is my main goal when making videos for this channel to come up with videos that are not only informative but help keep you aware of recent changes in the ever-changing world that is Amazon FBA. And that is exactly what this video is about. Amazon just sent out an email to us that has two very important announcements that if you don't know about can really impact your business in the months ahead. First things first, Amazon has just announced changes to their inventory performance index that will make it a little harder for you to get unlimited storage if you're not doing what you need to be doing. What Amazon's IPI score does, it basically puts in a nutshell the health of your inventory. It monitors your inventory to make sure that you don't have an overflow of excessive units, that you're handling your listings and fixing them when you need to. Uh, it also measures that you are selling through your inventory at a healthy rate. So basically what it's doing is it's making sure that you are sourcing items that sell fairly quickly, that you're pricing correctly so that you're not sitting on them longer than you need to. And that aside from that, you're also doing a good job of managing your account. This all came about because too many sellers were treating Amazon like they were in the storage game as opposed to the sales game. And beginning to measure us with IPI was just Amazon's way of reminding us otherwise. So when Amazon rolled out IPI, uh, they gave us a minimum score or a minimum threshold of 350 and in exchange for hitting that threshold you would have unlimited storage they said do whatever you want just keep your score over 350 if you fell below 350 you would have additional fees and you would have limits on the stuff that you could send into Amazon well now in the last couple of days Amazon has made announcements for 2020 and the IPI score the minimum threshold is no longer going to be 350. The score is going to be 400 as your minimum threshold in order to maintain unlimited storage. Now, this announcement is not going to affect your current storage for quarter four. But beginning on the week of November the 11th, Amazon is going to assess everyone's IPI scores. And if your score is below 400, they're going to send you a reminder email to let you know that you are in danger of losing your unlimited storage limits. What this is going to do is this is going to give you an additional five or six weeks to fix what it is that you need to fix to improve your score. The thing about IPI is that it is a 90 day average. So they need to give you a little bit of time to bring that score up. And that's exactly what that reminder email is going to do for you. But on the week of December the 23rd, that's when they are actually going to assess your account health and your IPI score for the first quarter of 2020. If your score is below 400, you're going to have inventory storage limits for the first quarter of 2020. But the good news is that IPI is not a mystery. There are three extremely specific things that you could do starting today to make sure that you can keep your IPI in a healthy range. Amazon even goes so far as to list them for you within the IPI score in the exact order of the impact they have on the score. So the first thing that they list is your excess units. The best way that I could explain excess units is to uh, describe them as any unit where it would actually cost you more to store the unit than it would cost you to take action on that listing such as reducing the price or promoting the listing or even just removing or destroying it. You see this quite often on listings where you have multiple quantities of the same items but uh, that rule will basically apply to any unit that you have in inventory. So step number one, get your excess units down to nothing or as close as possible and your IPI score will go up if you took action. The second item, and I'm very passionate about it, I talk about it quite a bit on this channel, improve your sell-through rate. 
Put yourself in a position from day one of having inventory where you are able to flip it, where you're able to make profits, turn it into cash flow, and get fresh inventory into the warehouse. It makes no sense at this point with the direction that Amazon is taking to send inventory in and be willing to hold it. The better your sell-through rate, the better your IPI score is always going to be. So take action from the way that you source, from the way that you list, and the way that you price. But more importantly, the way that you reprice and how often you do so has such a big impact on your business overall. Amazon is just now giving you an additional reason to make sure that you have a great repricing plan in place. If you have a growing inventory and your goal is to continue to grow that inventory, consider a repricer because not only are you going to make money by selling your goods, but these thresholds and these inventory limits are just not something you're going to want to mess with. And the third action that you can take to improve your IPI score, which I consider to be a very important one as well, is to fix your listings. This is pretty specific to stranded inventory. Some time back, I did make a video on stranded inventory. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the YouTube card up here. It's just an introduction to what stranded inventory is and some of the things that you can do to reduce stranded inventory in your inventory. You want to keep an eye on that. You want to stay on top of that because stranded inventory could be a sign of an item that you are restricted or gated in that you may not be aware of as well as categories or specific ASINs that you cannot sell. It could be a matter of a listing that was deleted uh, but was at the same time returned on you. So these are things that you want to take action on and it could be just as simple as creating a brand new listing or having the item removed. Now I'm glad that I said remove the item because that leads to the second major announcement that was in this email. Amazon is throwing us a little bit of a bone. They realize that we are going into the fourth quarter and while they also are going to want additional space in their warehouses, they want to give us a chance to fix our inventories because they're not trying to limit us. They want to make money as well. So beginning today, October the 14th, Monday, we are now in the middle of a free removal period. It doesn't happen very often, so take advantage of it. A free removal period is a period of time that Amazon specifies where we are able to remove by either having items sent back to us or just out and out destroying an item, any inventory that we no longer want to have in our inventory. So from today until October the 31st, we're going to have the ability to remove any item from our inventory completely free of charge. But I would do it as quickly as possible because Amazon does specify that if they want to, they can end the promotion early and you just get an email that says you're out of luck if you haven't already done it. Now just be careful what you remove because whatever you do remove, you can't send back into the warehouse until January 31st of 2020. But here's the question of the day. How has your IPI score been over this past year? And what are your thoughts on the recent changes to the IPI scores going into 2020? Go ahead and put in your comments below. Because now that they've changed it once, I'm pretty sure they're going to change it again. Well, that's all for today's video, folks. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see me make more videos like this one, please remember to share, like, and subscribe to support the channel. If you haven't liked the video yet, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and tap on that book bag right there. And while you're in there, make sure you tap on that bell, turn on those bell notifications so that YouTube lets you know every time I drop a new video. Until next time, let's go make some money.